to talk about uh, the world after the financial apocalypse because many analysts uh, they talk about uh, uh, you know that there's going to be a financial uh, apocalypse or a financial collapse but then again we are already in it and uh, we have gone part ways through it and there's more to come but a few analysts excuse me, uh, talk about what will happen afterwards. Uh, but, but there are some, for example, uh, Peter Schiff talks about uh, what, what could be happening uh, in, in a year or in, uh, in a month. Uh, Harry Dent, he talks about it. Uh, David Stockman says that, hey, these guys, the zombie companies are just going to go belly up and uh, after a little while you have to go to back to work and uh, our economy is not going to be as uh, uh, big as before but uh, we're going to have some kind of economy so uh, people are starting to think after uh, all this is done what will be going on and uh, oh, uh, Michael Pinto talks about it. Um, well, the population of the United States is about 325 million or 350 million. Okay, so if you multiply a thousand by 350 million, you're gonna get a number like. 350 billion yeah that's another uh, incorrect calculation that's that's you're adding three zeros to a million and that's a billion and you have 350 million so you, you got 350 billion dollars but uh, the US government the Federal Reserve have already blown away uh, about uh, two trillion dollars. I, I don't know how much they have secretly uh, given away from the back door of the building. Uh, <laughs> a lot of this stuff is uh, totally not so transparent. So if uh, I don't know, I don't know if I should use the word if. I think when. The, the government finally reaches the conclusion that hey we are going to have to have basic income and if our population is not so jittery that they have lost all their jobs and uh, they might lose their home then uh, you know we could relax there will be some kind of economy uh, there will be retailing stuff like that so I think that uh, uh, what in the near future, the, the, the banks, the Fed, the government, they're going to do everything. They're going to print more money, trillions more, maybe another 10 trillion, who knows. And how much they will print and give away from the back of the building. But it will not work because uh, the, these, many of these companies, they're zombie companies. And they have to die. They have to go away. You cannot put the Humpty Dumpty back together. Okay, no matter how much money you spend. So then the next project will be the basic income and the rise in uh, wages or living wages. Okay, so this will be the way that the the banks or the government will try to save themselves because there is money circulating in the economy again and there is uh, other companies, other people that are not so stupid, they are not, they didn't uh, have a heart attack drinking from Fed's punch bowl all night uh, or they will come in and do something, they will uh, create some industries 
uh, it might not be as great as what we had in the uh, 1950s or 60s, but there will be some kind of economy. And uh, well, I had another video. Uh, a lot of I I know a lot of analysts have seen it, and they all hate uh, socialism. But uh, uh, socialism is baked in the cake that uh, because of technological evolution, we have actually entered a zero marginal cost society. And uh, socialism it, 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 it is an emergent phenomena from technological advancement. Actually, capitalism needs scarcity in order to function and if there is no scarcity capitalism cannot function okay well there will be some things that will be scarce in any society in the future society uh, but uh, in order to kind of see this you have to go into human history and try to find analogies and things that are scarce, and then they will remain scarce. They, 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 will not, uh, they will not become mass produced, no matter who tries it. I want to talk about things that will remain scarce. Uh, th things like sex, prostitution, drugs, hard drugs, liquor, uh, I don't know if, where it's illegal. Uh, military services uh, like uh, um, you know uh, murder for hire uh, mercenaries uh, weapon making uh, war making will, uh, will be scarce and uh, but the co countries that engage in it they'll, they'll get their asses kicked because the technology is everywhere now uh, one scenario that might happen is that the United States will engage in warfare uh, and uh, the foreigners which are very fed up with them will retaliate and uh, then the uh, Americans will be printing much more money try to fix the place to bring it back to the way it was or in the uh, meantime uh, also print a lot of money just to bring the stock market back together is uh, is a, is a form of uh, trying to bring itself into a, into a past that doesn't exist anymore. That's a form of a scarcity. Uh, it's a very strange way of thinking, but uh, this is uh, what can happen. Uh, things that are, will be scarce will be like uh, labor labor that's uh, not dedicated to stupid old industries, labor that can be utilized to to do things that society needs right this minute, right now. Uh, like labor that's in the medical field, in the security, uh, society always needs that. Uh, entertainment that only like private party can provide uh, like uh, singers or movie maker, movie uh, uh, actors, stuff like that. They won't, be, uh, they won't become mass produced. They, somebody has to do that. Like a hairdresser has to go uh, or have a shop and cut somebody's hair. It's a service uh, or services that are personal and valuable. They, they won't become mass produced. I don't know, maybe they will come up with robots that can cut hair, but <laughs> I wouldn't trust my hair. I don't have any hair, so uh, I don't have that problem. But, uh, you know, we, we should think in, in a different uh, line of uh, thinking, different uh, reasoning. Uh, I think that uh, I was listening to Kaiser report, they were talking about Bitcoin. Actually, Bitcoin reinvented scarcity with money. 
because it's hard money, there is only a limited supply and it's very difficult to break this code and uh, you know, uh, uh, create millions of more bitcoins illegally like, uh, uh, like a bank print all the dollars as it was. You can't do that with bitcoin. So that's really hard money. And that uh, has the scarcity encoded in it and uh, that's valuable in a society that the scarcity is dying out. The, another reason that scarcity is dying out is that uh, there are many technologies to produce food, to produce energy in a decentralized way. There are many technologies you can uh, uh, make all the electricity you want for your home, for one building. You, you know what I mean? Uh, so why would you want to uh, use centralized uh, power plants? So what I'm saying is that centralization will die uh, because there is the decentralized cheaper technologies is available to anybody. This is a subject that I've been going through with many uh, lectures or ideas. Uh, I sometimes watch these uh, these videos on uh, abandoned buildings or uh, ghost towns. Like you know, there is a lot of them in uh, <coughs> in Arizona, and Nevada. You go in all these buildings that somebody built it when the, there was a gold rush or in the 50s and 60s some Hollywood celebrity came in and did all this and the buildings are all there the, the structure is everything everything might even work but people have left the place it, there was a, there was some kind of economy there was some kind of uh, uh, society there, but it's not there anymore. Well, uh, another effect or another uh, scenario that might happen in a post-financial uh, apocalyptic society would be uh, the collapse in confidence. I have a video called Confidence Collapse that, you know, the banks, the government, the the institution, many institutions or schools that the United States has, they'll be doing all this stuff to bring a, a past back. And it won't work because technology and underlying economy has changed. But the, the people who are around, they, they'll, they'll be looking at all this and see how these people, they fail over and over and over. For example, I watch uh, uh, Gregory Manorino, he talks about the stock market. And may, uh, also Harry Dent, he talks about it, that there has been a collapse, a 30% or 40% collapse in, uh, in the stock market. But this is just the beginning. There's going to be another 30-40% before there is a floor of what these stocks are really worth. But then uh, many of these analysts, they also see the other collapses coming in the bond market because uh, many uh, investors will look at these bonds that are at very high prices right now and uh, they, they, would, they would want to get something for, the, uh, for it before they collapse too. So when this bond market collapse happens after the stock market collapse, the interest rate will jack up, uh, I don't know, 20%. And this will put a complete end to any kind of speculations, any uh, new investments, uh, and then uh, whoever is lending money, they're going to be uh, really asking what, what 
project or what ideas are you investing this money in? Is there any real returns? And uh, besides all this that's happening, th then there is uh, uh, this confidence collapse, uh, lack of faith in many institutions. I don't know if the US dollar itself is going to completely die out. I think there's, there will be some kind of dollar, but what value it will have. And uh, uh, we, are, we are going towards socialism. It doesn't matter how many uh, videos or lectures you wa watch from Peter Schiff or uh, other commentators. Um, this system has imploded and it, there's only one place it can go. Uh, well, there is another uh, problem with capitalism itself. When there is no scarcity, okay, say for example, I, I'm trying to sell clothes and say for example, women clothes and there is such an abundance of these clothes. My customers, they can find these online, they can find these in the Goodwill, there are all these uh, cut price shops, and uh, there, is, uh, <laughs> there is auctions everywhere. Okay, so I'm like an investor and I want to make a, a store selling women's clothes. Okay, then I would be very leery <coughs> if to put in my own money, I probably would want to get the money from the bank or some bank or any idiot that wants to get into this business and uh, you know risk his money and uh, then also I'll be very very uh, cautious because uh, the profit margin is very low this uh, this product or commodity is um, is very much available and then I also don't know what technological uh, uh, development is in the works the, in the future uh, w well there might be a system where uh, a girl that wants to buy uh, upscale uh, clothes will just have her uh, dimensions, all that, recorded with some kind of uh, French clothes manufacturer, and they uh, uh, she will go online and try all these things. It's actually she's the designer, and then uh, once she makes the purchase, the manufacturer uh, instantly printed out in a 3D printer. Uh, everything is extremely cheap. So if I'm an investor, I'm coming in and I want to make a shop that sells women's clothes, then I got all this stuff going on. I, I mean, my future earnings is kind of very doubtful. But this, this is what happens with decentralization, with uh, technological singularity, you know, these all the business models, they, they are very much in jeopardy. You don't know if this business model may or may not work. And uh, so, uh, in fact, the girl or the shop or the online store, they are the ones that they are actually the store. They, they are the uh, producer, they are the designer, they are the ones that are, will be clipping the profit margin. Uh, you follow what I'm saying? Uh, so uh, everything would be so uh, radically changed. Uh, I, w I would have very, uh, very uh, worrisome time. But the, then uh, capitalism can work in countries that technology is, uh, is backward, in third world countries. But this, even there, as it progresses, as the cost to production collapses, then the, the, the investors there also have the same problem. Uh, well, I think that the many central banks are also printing a lot of money 
and they are going to follow the same sad route as the Americans are following. Uh, well, we, we could also have uh, uh, World War III, uh, for example, say uh, the United States attacks Venezuela or Iran and they get very pissed and they retaliate or nuke New York, for example. Then the people here will be spending all this money and time and resources try to rebuild New York. So there will be a period of reconstruction, like a reconstruction after World War II, where a lot of money went into the uh, economy and the place was rebuilt again. This could be a boom time, uh, similar to af the era after World War II. But uh, it, it's just uh, the money that went to make things the way they were before it was nuked. I mean, uh, it's not really a, a progress, it's just uh, putting things back again the way they were. Well, I think that uh, uh, deflation is a good thing. Uh, also, deflationary collapse for the financial market is, is a even better thing because it kills all these stupid zombie companies and uh, it allows the real economy, real, uh, real uh, technological, financial uh, trends to come in and take over. It's like you have uh, cancer, uh, when, once you go into chemotherapy and you kill the cancer cells, your body can heal afterwards because the cancer cells are gone. They are not diverting the resources of society, resources of banks, the resources of the central bank to the stupid uh, speculations and uh, financial, uh, you know, wiseacring, uh, all that. Well, I, I'm a, a mathematician at heart. Uh, so I like to kind of model uh, things and for, for times that haven't come in yet but they are in the works, see how they would look like. Well, uh, before I let you go, remember in this new post-apocalyptic society, there is one thing that may help capitalism survive or exist in some limited sense and that is scarcity. Anything that you can now manufacture ma or mass produce, uh, that thing will have a price. Thank you very much. If you can understand my ideas and my lectures, you, you should really wonder why you don't have your own PhD. And uh, please leave your comments, don't be shy, and also subscribe.